Ladies and gentlemen, I am the American Spy Fox. Welcome to the channel. As many of you know, I've been reading about and researching Alice in Chains and Nirvana for quite some time now. The thing that I've noticed is when it comes to other bands, like Alice in Chains, stories don't change. You can look at online articles, magazine articles from back then and now, interviews with the band and friends of the band, and all of the stories are the same. They agree, but when it comes to Nirvana, you really have to decipher what's real and what was concocted by somebody I don't even feel I need to name, and her friends. We're going to start with the most outrageous, bogus of claims, and then we will move closer to the truth. By the end of the video, you will have your proof of when Kurt and Courtney actually met. That's what this video is all about. Let's do it. The first piece of evidence I want to bring your attention to is a 1992 article by Vanity Fair called Strange Love. This is the infamous article that Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love would come to hate. Courtney gave a lot of personal information out to the to this journalist that she should have kept to herself, and then she cried about it later that they wrote everything she told them. You gotta remember, Courtney was used to Jessica Hopper and Everett True, friends of hers who were music critics and journalists that she could control what they were writing. I think Courtney was a bit naive. She did not understand, if I tell this journalist personal things about my drug use and my family life, they're going to write about it. She was comfortable with journalists up to this point because she had always controlled them. Her naivety and ego didn't allow her to understand this person isn't my friend. I know Kurt hated it, but mainly he hated it because Courtney exposed herself. And again, remember, this is in 1992. She definitely relishes her position as Mrs. Kurt Cobain. It was one of her goals, not something she left up to fate. She wanted to go out with a rock star. It was obvious. Maybe if she wanted to be famous vicariously through them, but it had to be a rock star. Courtney developed a new infatuation. When I heard Sliver, I was like, he can right so the two guys in rock with the best noses were axel rose and kurt cobain and i certainly wasn't gonna meet with axel rose the couple first met eight or so years ago in portland back then she recalls we didn't have an emotion toward each other so she tells vanity fair in 1992 that they made they met eight years ago that would have been 1984 kurt cobain would have been 17 years old and at this point in time, she wants the whole world to believe that they had been friends up until the point they became boyfriend and girlfriend. And in the clip from Courtney Love Behind the Music, she's admitting that in 1990, she heard Nirvana's single Sliver and said, man, that guy has a great nose and he writes really well. I'm going to pursue him. I think we can all write this off as a lie moving forward. Nirvana's single Sliver releases in 1990. Courtney's telling us that she heard Sliver and she thought, man, that guy can write. I got to get him. So we've narrowed it down. She, they couldn't have met pre-1990, but that does not stop Courtney from telling us yet again that they did. How did you meet Kurt? I met him in 1988 at a Dharma Bums show where I was doing spoken word. Um, and he had a girlfriend that I thought was chunky and I told him so. And um, and uh, he wrestled me. He wrestled you? Yeah, he wrestled me on a beer-soaked floor. By 2012, in an interview with Fuse, Courtney Love changes the story, moves it four years forward, from 1984 to 1988. And it seems to be a believable story, especially when you couple it with the interview on the last 48 hours of Kurt Cobain with British music journalist Everett true i was very excited to meet her because i thought her band were incredible she was even more excited to meet me because i was like this hot shot name journalist from the uk and courtney does have a certain fondness for the media or so i've been told and next thing i know we started drinking and next thing i know we're kind of punching each other because you do don't you? you meet someone you really like their band you punch them i mean it's a sign of affection and we were rolling around on the floor and uh, nirvana walked in and kurt sees it sees you know Everett True rolling around on the floor with this blonde woman punching each other, most natural thing in the world, to jump in on top of us and start punching. And that was kind of how they met. So at that point, I thought, okay, case closed. Courtney finally tells the truth. They met in 88. Everett True confirms the story. Case closed. I pretty much left that whole subject alone and forgot about it. That is, until I came across an article written by Charles 
Cross. If you don't know who Charles Cross is, he's probably the most well-known of authors who have written about Kurt Cobain, of a, of a Kurt Cobain biography that is out there. And from what I know, what I understand of Charles Cross, he is very enamored with Courtney Love. When I hear Charles Cross speak about Courtney Love, I hear a man in love with a woman speaks about her as though she is just God's gift to men. She's the greatest thing to ever walk the earth, which makes me think he could have a biased opinion. If you really, really like someone, you're probably not going to write anything bad about them, right? And, and on top of that, through further research, I found out that the book Heavier Than Heaven, he completely relied on Courtney Love for the information in that book. So if you read it, take it with a grain of salt. More importantly, the article I found, Charles Cross, who's very, very close with Courtney, wrote an entire book with the help of Courtney, says that they met January 12th, 1990. Charles Cross says that they met in 1990, that Kurt was there for a Nirvana gig, they are in Portland, and they've come to, to see the opening band named Oily Bloodman. She says to Kurt, you look like Dave Perner. Dave Perner was the singer of Soul Asylum, and that's how they sparked up conversation. Now, if you were paying attention to Courtney's interview, she said they met in 88 in Portland at a Dharma Bums show where she was doing spoken word and she called Kurt's girlfriend Chunky or something like that. And he wrestled her because of it. Because that's what everybody does when you throw insults at their girlfriend, right? They, they tussle with you playfully on the floor. It's like two different stories intermingled with each other. And I'm wondering, Charles Cross is pretty close to Courtney. Why, why are these stories different? And if you go on Wikipedia, that's the answer you're going to get. For, for whatever reason, whoever put this bit of information on Wikipedia decided to side with Charles Cross and go by Cross's date. And I'm thinking, that's weird because Cross loves Courtney. Why wouldn't he agree with her and say they met in Portland in 19... 1988. There's more to this, right? I realize that I'm not going to get the answer from Courtney, and I'm not going to get the answer from Charles Cross. I'm going to have to look at other people who would be in the know. So I start looking more into Everett True. There's one thing I know about Courtney Love is she burns bridges. Perhaps at the time the interview was happening with Everett True, him and Courtney were just fine and dandy. But Courtney loves to burn bridges. And guess what? She did burn a bridge with Everett True. In a later interview, he reveals this. Everett True, did I tell you the story of me introducing Kurt to Courtney? No, there's not that much debate about it. The only debate that exists is the fact that Courtney made up a story that she met Kurt a couple of years earlier in Portland and Kurt backed it up with my full approval because we didn't want her to be seen as a gold digger. In other words, they met much later than what people think. They met when Kurt was a rising star. Kurt was such a nice guy and he cared about Courtney so much and he knew that she cared a lot about her image. Kurt would go to great lengths to get people to like like Courtney. Even at his concerts, he would say, everybody in the room, please say I love Courtney on the count of three and... Okay, ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Okay. Thanks. Courtney loves the best in the world and like he went out of his way to try and get people to love Courtney as much as he did including allowing her to tell people that they met years before so she would not be seen as a gold digger he was that nice of a guy again back to the drawing board well that's debunked but it still doesn't answer when they met my mind went back to a previous Nirvana series video in which I showed a clip from a Billy Corgan interview in which he detailed a day in his life where Courtney shows up to his hotel room, leaves the hotel room, meets Kurt Cobain, and he says the rest is history. So she came to Chicago and... I wasn't expecting her. Didn't she phone you saying she was... Could should she come? She, she, she called me and said, well, how do you feel about me coming to Chicago? And I sort of ambivalently said, sure. And which, by which she informed me, I'm already here. I'm at the airport. <laughs> And you're with your girlfriend at this point? Well, my girlfriend at the time wasn't aware of this concept. So right. I was put in this sort of all of a sudden awkward double bind. Courtney's not the type of girl you just say, okay, just sit down for a moment. Let's just be calm and think this through. So, she showed up looking very sexy, ready to rock. And uh, I kind of freaked out <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and tossed her out on her ear. Yes. Not thinking that she was going to walk 
five minutes down the block and run into Kurt Cobain and the rest is history. Which she did. Yeah. Billy says, sort of confused about it, unsure. They had been together on some level before this, but nothing serious, nothing romantic. That's actually untrue. Courtney had sat her sights on Kurt Cobain and he ignored her. Courtney was smitten and sent Kurt a heart-shaped box filled with miniature gifts. He didn't respond. Courtney had actually got to Billy Corgan the same way. As a groupie would, she sent him letters and gifts and presents and talked about him in interviews. By 1991, Courtney Love was riding high on the indie success of Hole's debut album, Pretty on the Inside. Even her love life was getting interesting. She'd always had a weakness for moody rock and roll frontmen, but her latest conquest was the most high profile to date, the Smashing Pumpkins' Billy Corgan. Courtney Love is in love with the singer of Smashing Pumpkins! Oh. Uh-oh. I think she was into the idea of him more so than being into him. She wanted to go out with the rock star. It's well into 1991, and everybody knows that Courtney has this thing going on with Billy. And Courtney pursues Kurt the same way she pursued Billy. Back in those days, we didn't have email and internet, right? If a fan wanted to get the attention of someone they liked, you sent letters, you sent gifts, you, you showed up to their shows and went backstage and talked to them. This is what Courtney did to Billy. It's the same thing she does to Kurt. There's no way that Courtney could have been involved with Kurt at this point in time because she's got Billy Corgan's attention. But Kurt is the rising star. He's basically replaced Billy Corgan on the totem pole. And she thinks, hmm, how do I get to Kurt Cobain? So now we know that any idea that Kurt and Courtney were together on any sort of intimate level pre-1991 is just garbage. Even Courtney's former bandmates and friend Kat, I can't pronounce her last name, tells us that Courtney wanted to date a rock star. Didn't matter who it was as long as it was the biggest rock star there was. She's going to get him. And sent Kurt a heart-shaped box filled with miniature gifts. He didn't respond. So she continued pursuing Billy Corgan, and in October, she flew to Chicago to see him. I just wanted to go see Billy and, you know, f him. She was after Billy, and he had a really steady girlfriend at the time. His girlfriend threw shoes at me, and I was like, fine, f you didn't tell me you had a girlfriend. You know there was a girlfriend. In a moment of rock and roll kismet, Nirvana was playing that night on the other side of town. Notice the poster? The Metro. Nirvana's playing on the other side of town in Chicago at the Metro. Yeah. They had just finished. I didn't even pretend I'd seen the show. I was like, hey. So I guess she got really drunk on alcohol. She fell and put herself down on the dance floor. Somehow they got together. Remember the story about her wrestling with Kurt on the floor? Well, what it really was was she was drunk and making a fool of herself in order to gain his attention. She probably yanked him down on the floor. So part of her story is true. The date is wrong. And then at the truck stop the next day. Yep. She just said at the truck stop. I called Corgan and I was like, dude, I'm so going with this guy. He's first of all really good in bed and I like him and he's cute. Remember, Courtney's a groupie, so she has to decide which band she's going to tag along with. They're both on tour. Am I going to leave with Billy? Because his real girlfriend's probably going to go back to their home. Billy's from Chicago. Do I tag along with Billy? Do I tag along with Kurt? Otherwise, she wouldn't have even felt the need to tell Billy. Why do you even need to tell Billy? He's in a relationship with some other chick. Billy's expecting her to continue to be a groupie and tag along with him. Don't get mad at me for these saying for saying these things. This is the rock and roll lifestyle. It's just how shit rolls. So Billy says that Courtney tried to come back to him. According to Courtney, she told Billy, I'm not coming back. I'm done with you. Who knows which is true. They're still on again, off again to this day. Courtney even went back to Billy three weeks after Kurt Cobain died. She's in Billy Corgan's bed. Now, you guys want the exact day 
that they met and I'm going to show you how I figured it out right now it was very very simple and I have two I have two pieces of evidence to prove that this is the correct date the first is Nirvana's concert history you can look at their archives see every single place they played you'll see that in 89 and 90 they did not play in Chicago they were still playing small venues with groups such as Tad and Sonic Youth it's not until October 12th 1991 that they play in Chicago at the Metro. If that's not enough for you, check out this piece from an article that I found quotes from Danny Goldberg, Nirvana's manager. Quote from Danny Goldberg, this is in a, a, a Vanity Fair article. I was there in Chicago when they consummated their relationships as Danny Goldberg, senior VP at Polygram and Nirvana's, and now, of course, now Hole's manager. We chatted for a while and Courtney worked her way into the other room where Kurt was. I didn't see Sparks, but they did go home together. That was in early October. They were married in February. October 12th, 1991 is when Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love met. She very quickly becomes pregnant less than four months later. Just a little over four months later, they're getting married in Hawaii. Courtney is well aware of what this looks like to anyone willing to take a look. Dude just became a superstar. He's, he, he was a rising star in October 91. Within another two months, he would be astronomically put on the world map. She admits in Courtney Love Behind the Music that she was looking to breed with a rock star. She says, I wasn't going to breed with Axl Rose. That left Kurt Cobain. So she got pregnant on purpose. She knows that people are going to call her a gold digger. They concoct this story that they met a few years prior in order to make it look as though their relationship had grown organic. When in fact, it went right along with Kurt's sad story of it's better to burn out than fade away. It just sparked up. She made it happen. I believe Kurt was kind of an old fashioned type of guy. Once he found out she was pregnant, he was not going to leave her. And I, and I think Courtney knew that you I, I know that a lot of people might disagree with me on that but just knowing kurt's background and the kind of family he came from the fact that his parents divorce tore him apart i would say it's it's safe to say that once he found out courtney was pregnant that's when he decided to marry and and make a good life for his daughter and he wasn't going to have a broken home for his daughter like he had for himself you've seen an interview with cat i can't pronounce her last name she's from babes in toyland she was best friends with courtney at one point to this day they're mortal enemies part of the reason is cat has came out with a lot of inside information about Courtney, such as the fact that she had planned to date a rock star before she even knew who it was. She would just figure out who's hot. Who's hot right now? That's the guy I'm going after, and I'll do anything I have to do to get him. It was Billy Corgan. Kurt Cobain comes along, and she says, Ugh, he's going to be bigger than Billy. Jump ship. Not that anyone can hardly blame her for leaving Billy. Billy was treating her like a doormat, treating her like a groupie because that's the way she had always acted. After Kurt dies, Billy Corgan ends up headlining Lollapalooza. Kurt and Nirvana was supposed to. They were supposed to headline Lollapalooza because Kurt turned it down and he died. The reins end up being passed to Billy Corgan. Billy Corgan then becomes top dog on the totem pole. Courtney Love goes right back to, to Billy Corgan. It is well documented that three weeks after Kurt's death, Courtney Love was spotted at Billy Corgan's ranch in Arizona. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The exact date that Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love met is October 12th, 1991. All the other crap is bullshit. There is more proof. I just couldn't fit it into this video. It would have ended up being like a 30 minute long video if I pr presented all of the evidence that suggests they met on October 12th, 1991. Did Courtney have her sights on him before then? Yes, she did. She knew she was going to be with him. He just didn't know. She even said in her interviews with fanzines and stuff like that, the underground publications, that she had a crush on Kurt Cobain. She let it be well known in the hopes that he would hear about it. January 12th, 1990 is not the correct date. It's October 12th, 1991 at the Metro in Chicago, Illinois.